Hi, I'm Jen Bishop and I'm a middle grade author and today I'm going to give you a tour of my bookshelves. Um, on Goodreads, Fantasy and Felines requested a bookshelf, a bookshelf tour. Oh, I can say that. Um, so here it is. Um, so just so you know, we are in the office, uh, my office, in the second floor of my house. Uh, you can see my plant over there. Um, I love having a space of my own to write in and also to put all of the books that are mine. Uh, I do share the house with my husband and my cat. My cat owns zero books, so there was not competition there. My husband owns a lot of books too, but I, over the first couple years here, I finally weeded out, so there are no books of his in my office. It's just all of my books. Um, so yay, bookshelf tour. Um, so it's important to know a couple things um, as we go into this bookshelf tour. One thing is that, um, uh, like many other authors, like I want to read and own more books than can fit in my house. So I have maybe, okay, third floor we have three bookshelves. This floor we have two bookshelves. And then the downstairs we have three more bookshelves. So I already lost track of that. I think that added up to 10. So we do have a decent amount of bookshelves in the house. Um, that said, in my dream, like every room would have built-in bookshelves and I would have a ladder and I would like probably crash into the bookshelves. Um, but in reality, um, we have standalone bookshelves in different rooms uh, and maybe someday I will have my dream. Um, but I think it's pretty nice. This is like the dream that I would have had beforehand of like, I have all these bookshelves and all these books. Um, but as an author, because I want, I read so much more than I could ever fit in my house. Um, I use the library a lot, so the books in my house are often changing, and even the books in my bookshelf are changing, and you will understand why as I do the bookshelf tour. So I'm going to show you this. The top up there are primarily author, author copies and stuffed animals and some plants uh, that I haven't killed yet. Um, and so, oh, I also, I don't have a lot of picture books. Um, I don't have any children yet, so... I don't have a need to have a lot of picture books. I love reading picture books from the library, but these are just a handful that I still own um, from authors that I met. I have to say, this is like the best picture book if you love books and you love libraries. Um, my friend Heather wrote this book and David Small illustrated it. I love his illustrations. You need to check out this book. Um, so the bookshelf tour. So the we're gonna go from left to right. So my recent organization was to have all my signed books in the first couple uh, columns. This goes down. Um, so these are all books that I got to have signed by the authors, which means in most cases I got to meet the author and have them sign it. So I've got like Sarah Dessen, books by Jean Birdsall, grown-up books, which are cool if you're a grown-up, um, but probably if you are like a 12-year-old reader of my books, so you don't really care about the grown-up books. Um, Angie Thomas's books. So some of these books, like I haven't, I was very sad I was supposed to be able to meet Angie Thomas um, at a book festival that sadly was canceled because of the pandemic, but I have her books. Someday I'll meet her and talk about Sims with her because we both love Sims and basketball. Um, like John Green's The Fault in Our Stars. I got that when it was just signed, but I did get to meet John Green. But I don't think I had him sign anything when I met him. I can't even remember. Um, so yeah, so I used to be a teen librarian. That was my first job before I became an author. And as a teen librarian, I went, sorry, I'm trying to figure out what it is. Um, I went to a lot of conferences with other librarians and I got to be in committees where we read tons of books. That's actually why I have this ginormous bookshelf is that there was a year, two years actually, I was on a committee where I got like a thousand books, two years in a row, and I could not even keep them in my house. So like I would get them and organize them and then once you realize I didn't need some of them, I would start donating because that is just a lot of books to keep coming. Like every day there would be a huge box of books. So it was exciting and overwhelming. Um, so now we're getting towards like in the middle of my bookshelf, I wanted to have more of the middle grade books that I love so I could like more easily grab them um, from like one zone when I do school visits and I wanna talk about a certain book. Um, they're currently in no alphabetical order. Oh, they're just... They just, I, I should put them in some kind of order because I think it's hard, but I'm, I'm pretty familiar with spines and I think a lot of these spines are pretty attention grabbing. Um, but some of these still like, you know, special sign books. So this is one, the other half of happy. This is a book that I blurbed, which meant I got to read it early and then they put what I said about it on the book. How cool is that? Um, but then I didn't expect this. This is like a very special thing that Rebecca sent me a signed copy. So I haven't been able to meet Rebecca in real life. Like I, but I loved, loved, loved her book. 
and that just is so special to have that dedicated signed copy. Um, and so as we move down, we have, you know, mostly they're all published books, though I do have some advanced copies of books because I used to get them as a librarian. So like, I love Goodbye Stranger. I know I need to have a finished copy of that, but I still have the ARC. Um, I have like the YA down a little bit lower, but I have still a decent amount of YA. Um, up here, I have some books that I read recently. I also have some very old books on my shelf. And by very old, I guess I mean books that came out like around my childhood. Um, this is The Summer to Die by Lois Lowry. And when I was in like fourth grade, I think I would get this, not this exact copy, but a pretty similar copy because like this is not a new book. Um, I would get this copy out from the library and I would be so obsessed with it that even when I didn't check it out, I would like go visit it on the shelf and like go and read like my favorite parts, which were the really sad parts because I didn't have a lot of sadness in my life as a kid. I was very fortunate, but for some reason I was drawn to books that made me feel really strong emotions. Um, so A Summer to Die was one of those first books like that just felt like, like, oh, like there's so much complexity to life and like so many dramatic things can happen and like nothing dramatic was happening in my life. Um, but I don't know, I was just, I was very moved by it. And so I have some spots for favorite authors um, so Phyllis Reynolds Naylor is one of my favorite authors in the library. Like her shelf will have, I don't know, like 120 books. She's written so many books. Um, I loved the Alice series growing up. So some, some of these are deleted library copies. Yeah. So that's the thing. So the summer to die is a deleted library copy. And, um, as a librarian, sometimes you have to replace books because they are not, um, they aren't in the best shape anymore and there might be like a new paperback version of it that has like an update an updated cover that's like a little more appealing to kids today oh kids today um so i get to take like when you delete those books you can recycle them because books are paper and you can recycle them you can like sell them in library use book sales well you can you're allowed to take them home so i took some of them home um and that was really fun but then i got, i took too many home um so then yeah that was an oopsie. Um, that was when I owned less books overall, but now I have so many books that I, I could not do that. Um, so this is another shelf of like older books, books from my childhood. Um, this book, Wise Child, oh gosh, I love that like cover illustration, it's so haunting. Like this was not a typical gen book because it's not contemporary, which is my favorite, um, but I really enjoyed that as a kid. Um, keeping in the theme of old books, this is the oldest book I own. Um, it is a book about children from the during in France during the Great War, which is World War One, and it was published in 1918. And I'm just super curious about World War One. I. I would like to someday write a historical novel, though, and I think World War One is a time period that is less explored in historical middle grade. I don't have an idea yet and I know it involved a lot of research, but I'm holding on to that book for like the time when I want to suddenly like read a bunch about World War One and, you know, try out like a more ambitious project in terms of like scope and research. Um, it suddenly reminded me, I felt like I have, oh yeah, I have like this little spot that's my like signed Newberry books. I have two that I picked up at bookstores. I have this old copy of Hitty Her First Hundred Years by Rachel Field. And it's signed by Rachel Field. I don't know if that's 1930 or 1980. Oh my gosh. I don't think it's 1930. Is it? Oh, it might be 1930 because the book came out in 1930. So that's pretty cool, right? I got that at a used bookstore um, near this really famous flea market near where I grew up. And I have um, a signed copy of The Summer of the Swans. So I'm not Sierra, but I do have this signed copy. Like I think in my dream life, I also have like a fancy you know, a fancy library um, with like a leather chair and like stained glass windows. And like in that world, I also have acquired all of the Newberry books signed. Um, I think that's probably not going to happen in real life. And probably I'll have like a few more I can add to this shelf. Um, so yeah, some more contemporary middle grade, some young adult novels um, that I enjoyed from the last couple of years or from when I was on um, the Best Fiction for Young Adults Committee, uh, which I did. 2012, 2014. Um, so up here we have author copies. So you see a lot of copies of things you can't say. 
And all that's left in my author copies of other books. So just like a couple. Um, I probably should have held on to a bit more. I know I can still order them, um, but the, the ones I order now often aren't the first edition, first print run, which are more valuable in the event that I become wildly famous author and suddenly my own books are super like valuable beyond the cost of the book, which we're not at that phase yet. And we may never be at that phase and that's okay. Um, but anyway, when you publish a book, your publisher will send you a nice box of hardcovers and you get those for free and your agent gets them for free. And, but because you get them for free and you know, like I don't need like 24 copies of all of my books, like clogging up my shelf space. Like right now, I think it seems weird to have that many copies of things you can't say. But because I'm recording this video in August of 20, uh, 2020, you probably remember that we are still in the middle of a pandemic. And so it's been hard to hard. Oops, I'm gonna have to stitch that together afterwards, I hope. Um, but yeah, so I'm recording this video in August 2020. And so even though Things You Can't Say came out in March, which is a while ago, it's been five months, I only got to have one in-person event for it. And I didn't get to do like school visits and all the things you would normally do when a book comes out. So as a result, I have all these copies. Um, I did some giveaways. I guess I need to do more giveaways. Um, but I guess speaking of giveaways, you know, one of the reasons... Um, I have a, you know, an interesting mix of books on my shelves and it's books that I've enjoyed. Um, and sometimes I know use the library for most of the books that I read. And so if I'm buying a book, it's usually from an event or lately, um, there was a period where the libraries were closed for a couple of months. And I was like, how am I going to get all the books that are coming out that I want to read? So I ended up buying more books than I would typically buy. As you can see, there are only like a couple spots on my shelf where there's any room to put extra books. Like, where are they going to go? So um, I did more giveaways. So I put, I put it together like book stacks and gave them away on Twitter to educators who could help get the books in the hands of kids who need books. Um, so I'm sort of always doing that. I'm always a little bit pruning my bookshelves to make room for new stuff. Um, and it's not because I don't love the books. I just can't hold on to all of the books. And that's okay because um, libraries exist. So if I need a book again that I gave away, I can get it from the library. Um, so we're gonna whoa, swirl around here and then I'm gonna crash into the desk because I did not give myself enough room. Um, so now we are at the spot where, so now we're really close to my desk. So now I've moved um, my laptop onto my desk and I also have better lighting. So that's convenient. Um, now the sun is shining. Um, so over here we have my writing craft books. And so I think I think often there's this idea that like writers are good at writing because of something inherent in them that made them good at writing. And that is not true. Like writers are good at writing because they've spent a lot of time working at writing. They've just written a lot. And that is certainly true for me. I have written a lot of things over the years um, to get to the point where I am now. And I also studied writing a lot. And so these are three shelves of craft books. And these are books where I can go if I'm struggling with some aspect of story and trying to figure things out. Um, and for me, that's usually coming back to the plot, sometimes character. Um, but these are, so these are some of my favorite books. For young writers, I would really recommend Spilling Ink, um, a young writer's handbook. This was one that I used with my library writing clubs a lot. Um, has really great exercises for getting into your characters or for working through writer's block or really any of the things um, you struggle with as a writer. Um, I also really love, it's next to my other favorite writing book, Saves the Cat Writes a Novel. Um, I love the way that the Save, Save the Cat, um, not Save the Cat, Save the Cat, the way it breaks down um, story structure. Um, I've always really struggled with plot. I have, I, oh, I have a character, but like what? What's, what happens with that character? Like this really breaks down like what what components make a story and then how you move through the story and what you need at different parts in the story. So I love it. I have been run through it many times and I use it now to outline books. Okay, it's a little tight there, so I need to rearrange that. Um, I also really love Stephen King's on writing is the one that I've read many times. Also Bird by Bird by Anne Lamott. I also have some notebooks about writing. Um, some bright, oh, Emotion Thesaurus. Some of these, like, it's useful for me to look at the books I have because sometimes you forget. And I forgot. I've got some pretty darn useful books. Um, well, I think Emotional Craft Fiction was pretty good, too. Um, but I want to show you something towards the very bottom. Oh, I have. Um, 
So at the very bottom of my bookshelf, well, I guess this will show you two things. One, that I cannot resist anything with Sesame Street or Muppets. So I do have the Sesame Street Treasury and Sherlock Hemlock and the Great Twiddlebug Mystery. I have a, like a big thing for Twiddlebugs. Okay. But um, what I also have are all of my yearbooks and my world history book, which is not exactly a history book. I also sort of used it as a diary in high school. How sneaky is that? So those are there if I ever need inspiration from my own childhood. And that was pretty useful the other week um, where I was thinking back on seventh grade and it was really helpful to look back at pictures from seventh grade. It just really brought me back to those years. Um, but that's a reminder that I need to make more videos. I also have my diaries. So maybe we'll dig into my diaries in another video. Um, so these, again, this is just one of my bookshelves. Um, and I also want to show you, because I mentioned how I get lots of books in the library. So next to my desk, and between my desk and my bookshelf, is this wonderful cart. And the cart is where I put all my library checkouts. And because I have too many library checkouts right now, they're also in this bag. Um, so that's a reminder that I need to do a bit of reading this week. So I don't like to have so many library checkouts that they don't fit on the cart, that's when I start to feel a little bit guilty. Like I should have left some of those books in the library for other people. Um, yeah, so that is, these are my bookshelves. Um, thanks for coming to my bookshelf tour. Maybe I will show you the other bookshelves in my house um, at another point. But thanks for watching. Bye.